found a way to finish. And um, I'm proud of those guys. And you know what? It, it is hard to win football games. It's hard. Um, you've seen it in the first three games. It's hard. And so I'm so proud of that group of guys to find a way to finish. Obviously, there's a lot of work to do. We have to get better. But um, you know what? Tonight's going to be about celebrating this victory. And uh, you know, I'm proud of them. It's an honor to do it here at this university with this support system. Uh, this is a special day for me personally, but um, hopefully for this program, this university. I'll open up for questions. We'll go to Pete Byrne on your right, uh, second row. Coach here in the middle. First of all, how does it feel to get your first win here? Whew. I keep trying to tell myself to enjoy it. There's a lot of coaching um, that happened on that field today that we can learn from. But listen, if you don't take a minute to enjoy these things, you're going to regret it. And uh, that's what I keep reminding myself, man, is that enjoy this victory. Um, we'll get back to work tomorrow. But again, I want to celebrate with those guys. You know, this is uh, about those guys that work and prepare those coaches that prepare their tails off. This is, uh, this is something special we're all going to share together. We've heard you talk a lot about how the success of this team will be up front on both sides of the ball. I'm curious your initial assessment on how you played on both lines today. You know, I did not love the way we played in the first half. Um, I, I got to go back and watch the film and see what the issues were. But I didn't. I know offensively we had a couple three and outs. We fumbled the ball the first half. It was just we weren't playing clean football. Um, defensively, we held them to 10 points. But, um, you know, we have to be better. And, you know, to see those guys come out in the second half and the offensive line really um, – dictate the running game and to see that in D-line get after the quarterback we're going to that's going to be our our backbone we're going to depend and rely on our O-line and D-line and, and I was really proud of the way they stepped up to the challenge in the second half Tim Priester third row on your left coach obviously slow start for Drew Pine in the offense how did you guys get him to to settle in. I know you relied on the running game a lot, but um, yeah. he, he settled in a little bit after that. Yeah, at first you're like, okay, just come on, he'll get it, and, you know, tap him on the shoulder pad. And then I said, okay, that's not working. And I kind of went to the other end of the spectrum, kind of ripped his butt a little bit, and um, that didn't work too much. We fumbled the next now. I think that was after the fumble, but you know what? I told Drew, relax, man. Go out and be Drew Pine and, and execute. And it helped because you gained a little confidence in the running game in the second half. And then he started making those passes. And we had White else have to do their job. It's not all Drew Pine. We had a couple of drops that we have to make sure that that doesn't happen. But um, he's a warrior, man. He is a competitor. And uh, he's a great example for everybody in that locker room because you never know when your, your number is going to be called. And Drew Pine always prepared as a starter. And uh, to see him get his opportunity, man, I'm really happy for him. You had three shots at a, a turnover down the stretch and still didn't <laughs> technically still didn't get it. But um, you, you had the pass rush. You stopped the run. You contained their passing game. I mean, yeah. I, you did give up a long touchdown drive in the third quarter, but really yeah. settled in after that. Yeah, I remember I, I said to the sideline um, after we gave up that touchdown drive, I think we were down three, and I just said, this isn't going to be a repeat. Like, this isn't going to be here we go again. We're going to change the outcome of this game. And it's going to be by our offense going out there and doing what we have to do and executing. And then our defense, when we get the opportunity, we're going to go out there and execute. And that's what you saw. And uh, we needed that. That was a big moment for us because I could see it on some guys' faces. And even mine for a second, oh, shoot, here we go again. No, that's not here we go again. We're going to change the outcome by the way we execute and by how hard we play. And, and it was great to see that. And, and to answer your question on turnovers, it, you know what? I did see it was more deliberate. We were trying to get the ball out. We, you know, DJ Brown gets a penalty for trying to rip the ball and he throws the guy down. We got to stop on the whistle. And that was the right call, but it was deliberate. And I mean, you just can't buy one at the end, end of the game. JD gets the, the targeting and you almost get a chance to last play the game. but. We're going to focus on the positives. We're going to focus on the positives. Tim O'Malley, front row on your right. Coach, you had five, six defensive linemen, I think, combined for six sacks, six more quarterback hurries. Is that kind of what you envisioned in the second half of games, that that unit would take over games, even if, even if the other team had some success early passing? Yeah, it's a deep unit. And, you know, I, I, was, I was hard on them. Um, Coach Washington, I was hard on that unit. And even after the first half, you know, a couple QB scrambles. And, but they know I believe in them. And there was one point Jason Adamiola in the second half, he walked over to me and said, Coach, I got you. I got you. Went out and made a sack. And 
that's what you want, man. You want some guys that take ownership in the performance on the field, and that's a deep group. Coach Wash does an excellent job with that group, and uh, we're going to need them all. We're going to need them all to have a relentless pass rush. And what was your conversation with Coach Reese, either halftime or I guess maybe midway through the second quarter when the offense started moving a little better? It seemed like you wanted to all of a sudden running the ball on first down, getting some positive yards, staying ahead of the sticks was the key to, to finally moving the ball there. Yeah, that might have been mentioned on the headset. Um, listen, Coach Reese is a great coach, and, and you know he's just as frustrated as, as everybody else in terms of the outcome. And um, I got his back, like I told him. And, and yeah, I wanted to run the ball. I felt like we were moving the ball, and let's continue to run it. But you can't run the ball the whole game. You know that to me that opens up some holes in the pass game, and so. I was proud of him saying, OK, you know what, let's go. Let's get some runs. Let's get the, the, the momentum going. And then he kind of took over. He made the check. Um, that touchdown, Audrey, I'm sitting there screaming, like, hit the call, go, 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 go. And he's like, coach, I got a check. Bam, made the check, scores a touchdown. I'm like, that's why I need to shut up and let you do your job. And so I'm proud of him and that whole offensive staff. Man, it's, guys, it was a tough week and for all of us, from me on down, that we had to really look at ourselves and, and really say, OK, what do we have to do to enhance? Sometime you don't want to hear, you really don't want to know where the negative aspects of what you're doing are. But in, for order, in order for us to get better, you had to take a deep dive into yourself first. Me as the head coach, our position coaches, onto our players, and, and really take accountability for our performance and, and attack it in practice. Listen, we didn't play a great, perfect game, but we found a way to win. And we're going to guess what? We're going to have to do that after a victory. We're going to have to go back on Sunday, enjoy this thing tonight, and take a deep dive into where we have to execute better and what we have to do. But uh, it's a lot better after a win. Staying in the front on your left, Patrick Engel. Marcus, it seemed like going off of what you said, some of the, maybe the early plan or what worked as it went on was try to get some guys out on the perimeter and, and quick throws. What did you like about that as far as maybe what suits your skill player's strength, but also for Drew just to see the ball go in receiver's hands? Yeah, he's most comfortable on those little bit on the run and getting easy passes. In the very first play of the game, we had, a, had him on a run, rolled out, and easy pass, and we end up dropping it. And yeah, it's got to be a better throw, but we got to execute. We got we to make sure that we got to have people that make the quarterback look good. You know, and, and a lot of, you know, res, the result of the play falls on the shoulders of the quarterback. But there's so much that happens during a play that really dictates the outcome, but quarterback's going to have to answer to it, you know? And so, again, Drew just continued to battle. He continued to make good decisions, and uh, he finished the game for us. What's going through your mind in that final minute where you think you've got it wrapped up and then the targeting and then think you have the sack and that's – or the fumble and that's overturned just yeah. as far as, like, come on, almost, or it was a, anxious? It was a conversation between me and God. There was a conversation between me and myself to focus on what matters and – I looked at JD and I wanted to talk to JD, and it, but there was a lot of things going on my head. But ultimately, you know what? You got to focus on what it takes to execute. And, um, you know, but there was some, Lord, what is going on? Um, and I look at JD and say, JD, really? But, you know, that's, that's, you know what? That's the challenge, Patrick, is that our minds can drift, mine included, to the outcome, to the future. Right to okay, last week, man. If we can beat Cal, then we go to. You can't worry about that. You have the minute that happens, get your mind back to what it takes to give yourself a chance to have success, and that's our preparation. And it's the same thing today, right? And that we're going to enjoy this thing. We'll go back tomorrow. We're not worried about, man, we, we got to beat North Carolina. We're going to buy. No, what does it take to have success? We got to evaluate, you got to practice it, and then get to Saturday when it comes. Staying in the front on your right, Pete Sampson. Marcus, was, was the second half offensively an example of like? accepting who you guys are offensively and is that difficult as a coach sometimes when maybe you want to be like up tempo take deep shots like you did last week but that's just not who your personnel is right now yeah um for this game that's what we had to do you know i'm not saying this is going to be who we are every game all year we have to take advantage of you know, where we feel like we can have success against a defense we play. And today it was we weren't having success early uh, in the first the first part of the game with our quick game and um, handling snaps. And so we said, OK, right now the, the edge we have is being able to run the ball. And so to me, that's what we got to be able to do. I don't listen. Our identity. Yep. We're an O-line, D-line driven program. We've got to be able to run the ball. But you can't just say this is what we're going to do. That's it. You got to be able to adjust to what is having success and adjust to what an offense or defense is giving you. 
At, during the week, uh, Reese talked about Tyree and the trust you guys have in him. Was today an example or, of that? And like, what does it do to sort of have a reliable skill position guy like him? Yeah, um, it was tough because, you know, Logan was out. Really, he had an illness on Thursday, he missed practice Thursday with an illness. And, you know, in our minds, it was like, okay, we're going to have to ride the back of, of Chris and Audric right now. And, and um, they both ran the ball really well. Uh, you know, I don't know how many yards they had, but but I thought they both did a good job in the backfield with the ball. Third row on your right, Matt Fortuna. Marcus, what did you see from Drew during the week? I mean, it was his first career start, but he's obviously played a lot of football. He got you guys to win. What did you see from him during the week about just accepting the challenge and responsibility? Oh, man, he was he was a little bit too excited. I'm like, Drew, calm down, calm down. I text him on Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember what day it was. I said, I told you at some point this season this time was going to come, and I did. I was in my office when we told him that we were going to name Tyler Buckner the quarterback, and I said, at some point during this year, you're going to have to lead this program to a victory or maybe multiple victories. And uh, I text him, here it is, and, and he was so excited. And um, he's preparing, preparing. We had to kick him out of the office a couple of times. Go home, get some rest, stop watching film. But that's who Drew Pine is. He's an ultimate competitor. He's going to prepare the right way. And uh, this is going to be a momentum builder for him. That's it. Thank you, Coach. Good. Well done. All right, guys. Thank you.